So it seems like everywhere you turn, someone's yapping on about 3D printing and how cool it is. Not interested, right? Well, then you see someone use it for something, well, useful. And you start to think, hmm, maybe it's worth looking into. But you have no idea where to start. You can barely spell 3D. So you start learning and you fall into this deep, dark rabbit hole of printers and filament and 3D modeling and what the heck's a thingiverse? Well, stop. I'm gonna make this simple for you. I'm gonna tell you exactly which 3D printer to buy, tell you why, and then show you how to get started. Now maybe I'm one of those annoying people on YouTube you've seen talk about 3D printing, or maybe you've just stumbled onto this video. Well, long story short, I've spent the better part of five years printing pretty much nonstop in a professional engineering setting. I've worked with very expensive industrial printers and crappy desktop models throughout that time. And I currently run a production print farm of about 40 printers that have amassed tens of thousands of print hours. I'm not just some dork printing Pikachu figurines for my desk. I may be a dork, but at least I know what functional 3D printing actually looks like. And that's really where my passion lies, using 3D printing to do real world stuff. And chances are, if you're watching this, that's what you're interested in too. And don't get me wrong, printing dumb things can be fun, but solving problems is fun-er. So, what printer to buy? This is the Prusa Mark IV, and it's a beige Toyota Corolla with cloth seats. It's not gonna win any drag races, but you can bet your ass it'll get you to work. And this, is the Bamboo Labs X1. And it's a Tesla Model S with a sleek interior and fake leather seats. It's very fast, will still probably get you to work, but doesn't quite have the track record of the Toyota. But what if I told you that the price point was the same? You get the Tesla, right? Well, not so fast. These two printers right here represent, in my opinion, some of the absolute best hobbyist 3D printer options on the market right now. And that includes for complete beginners. I will also say that every printer you see in this video was purchased by me. I'm not sponsored or affiliated with any of these companies. These opinions were formed myself after opening up my wallet and buying them. And I'm not gonna bore you with tech specs, speeds, and feeds. There's plenty of nerds out there that can do that for you. Instead, I wanna explain why they're great options, and it comes down to this. You ready? Both of these just work. That's it. And sure, you can save money, a lot of money, by going with a cheaper option, like an Ender 3. But as someone who wants to get into 3D printing and not into working on 3D printers, this is an invaluable feature that unfortunately costs some money. Nothing is gonna kill your printing curiosity like trying to manually level a print bed or endlessly add third-party components just to get the damn thing to work right. There's plenty of time for that later. The Prusa brand is synonymous with reliability, much like Toyota. That's why I run exclusively Prusa Mark III S Pluses in my print farm. They're reliable machines that can also be easily serviced due to the open source nature of the design and part availability. Prusa has been developing, manufacturing, and providing customer service for their machines since 2012. I bought my first machine in 2018 and it's still going strong. Last I heard they sell somewhere on the order of 10,000 of these per month. They're popular for a reason. But the new kid on the block, Bamboo Lab, is attempting to give Prusa a run for their money with their lineup of 3D printers. What they've done is essentially democratize the features of expensive industrial 3D printers and make them available on a relatively cheap consumer machine. They really have shaken up the hobbyist market because most of these customers have never seen anything like this. It's blowing their freaking minds. And since I come from the industrial 3D printing world, these features are not groundbreaking on their own right, but having them all in a printer that anyone can afford is really cool to see. And like most tech advancements, it's primarily driven through clever software implementation, not necessarily hardware. The reason why Bamboo Lab 3D printers are so ridiculously fast, and they are fast, isn't because they figured out how to make stepper motors move faster. They're using a process called input shaping. And this is essentially factoring the resonance or natural frequency of the printer and compensating for it in the movement of the machine. If the print head accelerates in one direction, the software anticipates how the printer structure is gonna react and effectively cancels it out. This is why prints can be up to four times faster on this machine than the Prusa, although on average I found it to be about twice as fast, which is still really considerable. I should be fair and note that the Prusa Mark IV, which is the one I showed, is their brand new model, which is capable of input shaping as well, at least from a hardware standpoint. At the time of its release, that feature isn't available, but it should be in the next software update. So that Corolla is getting tuned up should print much faster, but probably still won't be able to touch the speed of the Bamboo Lab machine. So what the heck does all that mean? Why do you care? Well, as a new 3D printing enthusiast, absolute speed may not be the most important consideration. Getting the damn thing to work without you thinking about it should be top of the list. Both of these machines have a bevy of sensors and automation to help accomplish this. 
For starters, both printers run through a bed leveling process before each print, which is very important for getting that first layer of plastic to stick to the print bed. This is one of the most common failure modes on a 3D printer and having this handled by the machine and not your chubby fingers is great. The next is software. Every 3D printer uses a program called a slicer. It takes a solid shape, slices it into very thin layers, and creates a file containing G-code that the printers need to run. And you really don't need to know anything about that, other than there are some settings that you can tweak to make your part print potentially better. Prusa has developed one of the absolute best out there called Prusa Slicer, and Bamboo Lab has essentially taken that exact same open source program and put their spin on it. So the good news is that both of these printer options use very solid software that's easy to use. Both machines have these big clear color screens that are easy to navigate. They both also have the ability to wirelessly connect to your computer so that you can start a print from anywhere. This beats the hell out of transferring files on a USB stick or an SD card. Ask me how I know. And finally, both printers have a hot end and extruder, this part that squeezes the molten plastic out, that can handle a wide variety of materials, so you won't really be constrained on what you can print with. Whew. Okay. So we've got two solid options here. Which one do I ultimately recommend you go buy if you're getting started? Neither. Instead, I recommend you go buy this one. This is the Bamboo Lab P1P, which is the stripped down, less flashy version of the X1 I showed previously. It's about $500 cheaper and is still an absolute beast of a machine. You lose some side panels, the fancy touchscreen, and a couple of sensors, but the printer itself is fantastic. It checks all of the boxes of what you need to get started. My default answer to anyone asking what printer I would recommend has always been Prusa. But now, since I've got to test the offerings from Bamboo Lab, this P1P is the clear recommendation going forward. But if you're more of a Toyota guy, which I totally get, and like the idea of reliability and a track record, instead of buying the new Prusa Mark IV, which I showed earlier, pick up the now discounted Mark III S Plus kit. About the same price as the P1P, and you just have to sacrifice the big screen, wireless connectivity, and some speed. Now, you may have heard me say kit, and the benefit of going with a kit versus a pre-built machine is that you get to build the printer and become intimately familiar with how it works. I built my first couple Prusas, and I really enjoyed this process, and even made a video a while back showing what goes into it. You can go check that out if you're interested. You'll have a good understanding of your machine and how to fix it should something need to be replaced down the road. And that's one of the biggest knocks on the new Bamboo Lab machines. Fixing or replacing parts does not appear to be anywhere near as user-friendly or even possible in some cases. But honestly, you won't go wrong with either one. But all things being equal, I give the nudge to the P1P. All right, so you pulled the trigger. You have a 3D printer sitting on your desk, but what do you do with it? This is where the confusion typically sets in for most people. Yeah, 3D printers are interesting, but what would I even use it for? Until you have one and have seen how it can solve problems, it's honestly hard to imagine any benefits. It just looks like a new thing you have to learn. I imagine it's similar to how many people thought about microwaves when they first came out. Yeah, but I have an oven that I warm food up in. Why would I even need a microwave? Nowadays, we can't even imagine not having one. Making a healthy lunch in two minutes, like these from Factor? <laughs> Wait, you don't, you don't know about Factor? Well, let me tell you about them. Factor helps meet your nutritional goals by delivering fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved meals right to your doorstep. I've been a longtime customer of Factor, so telling you about them is easy. Here's how it works. You pick how many meals you want per week and then either select a dietary type like keto, vegan, calorie smart, or protein plus, or just mix and match as you like. Each week you can choose from over 30 different chef prepared options, which means you won't get bored. I'm still finding new ones I haven't even tried yet. Plus there are add-ons like breakfast, smoothies, juices, and more. Then your meals show up packed in an insulated box ready for the fridge. When you're ready to eat, simply pop them in the microwave for two minutes and you're done. And it beats the heck out of takeout because it's cheaper, it's healthier, and it's a heck of a lot faster letting you get back to those summertime activities. And don't worry, I know summer's busy for everyone. You can easily skip weeks if you're gonna be out of town or just have other plans. Personally, I love the flexibility of Factor and the fact that they help me stick to my nutritional goals. If you wanna try it out or learn more, head to factor75.com or use the link below and use code SHOPNATION50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. That's factor75.com or click the link and enter code SHOPNATION50 to get 50% off your first factor box. Now you guys get back to the video and I'm gonna finish my lunch. All right, back to printing. You've got your new printer sitting on your desk. You're eager to get started, so what do you do first? Well, I would recommend you get some reps under your belt, meaning you need to go through the process of printing things to become familiar with how it works, and all you need to do that are some 3D models. Uh, what? Don't worry. At this stage, you don't need to know a damn thing about 3D modeling. There's a couple of great websites with entire libraries of parts and widgets you can download and print 
for free. The most popular ones are Thingiverse and Printables. There you can search for just about anything, and someone probably out there has already modeled it. My advice is to pick some projects out of here and start printing. Get in there, get your hands dirty, and heck, even make some mistakes. It's the best way to learn. And when you get stuck, there's endless videos here on YouTube to help you along the way. So once you get the hang of your new 3D printer, you'll start to see how quickly and easily it is to make things out of thin air. It's pretty fun, to be honest. But fun isn't why we're here. This is a tool that is capable of doing some really amazing things that's supplemental to your shop. So how do you go about using it to solve specific problems for you? Well, this is another sticking point for some. It's gonna take some 3D modeling. There just isn't any getting around it. At the end of the day, you need a 3D file to feed your printer. And if that model doesn't already exist, somebody has to make it. But before you frustratingly click away, you should know that you don't actually ever need to do any modeling yourself. Learning a modeling software is intimidating and it does take some time to get proficient, but lucky for you, we live in the time of the gig economy. All you need to do is head to a website like Fiverr or Upwork and you can find lots of skilled, eager individuals from around the world that can model whatever part you need. Sometimes all it takes is five bucks and in 24 hours you get the part file to send to your printer. The best part is that some of these people will actually design your part specifically for 3D printing which you'll learn is a thing. I know lots of people, even some who run 3D printing businesses, who don't do any modeling themselves. They rely strictly on contracted hired help to handle that. Now look, if you wanna learn how to use a tool like Fusion 360, which is my personal favorite, there are amazing resources out there. One of my favorites is Product Design Online, which I'll have linked down below. It's a very well thought out course that takes you from complete beginner to competent user in a self-paced environment. Highly recommended and way better than just cobbling together some random YouTube tutorials. So all that to say, don't let the intimidation of 3D modeling stop you from unlocking the power of 3D printing. You don't actually need it, but I will say learning it is a worthwhile investment if you choose to go down that path. All right, so you've got your printer, you've printed some stuff and maybe even come up with your own fix in your shop. That is literally all it takes to set the hook. The realization that this mystery machine, shrouded in nerd culture, is actually a very capable tool is the entire point I'm trying to get across. The availability and popularity is only gonna grow. I mean, look at CNC routers and laser cutters. Those used to be fringe subjects, but now everyone and their grandma has one in their shop, except for me. Look, I'm using 3D printing to help solve shop problems for the masses like dust collection and jigs, but that is just the beginning. There are so many possibilities that you can apply this technology too. And there's people out there doing truly amazing things that I know you would find interesting. It's a whole new world out there. I hope this video at least sparked your curiosity. Let me know if this video was helpful down in the comments. I get lots of questions asking about 3D printing, which printer to buy and how to get started. My aim with this video is to try and answer that so now I can forward a link and not have to type it all out. See ya.